Howdy, folks. Eric Darling here with, uh, well, with Eric Darling Data. And uh, I wanted to record this as a video because I am far too lazy to uh, blog about this today. It's Sunday and I don't want to <laughs> do all that work screen capping and highlighting stuff and all that other, the other things that go along with a, a great post. So uh, I was, I'm just going to record this video because I think that's going to be a little bit easier on everyone. Uh, so what I got is uh, something kind of funny to show you about what happens when we parameterize top. In other words, when we write a query, uh, store procedure, or whatever you want to call it, and we allow people to pass a parameter like this to top like this. Now, uh, I found some interesting stuff in this. Hopefully you find it interesting too. Now, I've got an, an index here. Uh, you can ignore that little red squiggle. It's because I already created it ahead of time because I know how much everyone hates waiting for indexes to create. And it's on creation date, descending, and vote type ID. Now, that is there mostly to satisfy this part of the query, my where clause on vote type ID and my order by on creation date. I know that for a bunch of the columns I'm selecting here, I'm going to have to do a key lookup. That's not really what this is about. What I want to show you is uh, what happens when SQL Server has to go looking for rare data. Now in the votes table, the way things break down is there are kind of a lot of uh, rows with a vote type ID of one. There are about 3.7 million. There are far fewer with a vote type ID of four. There's only about 733. The way that they break down in the index is fairly even. So when we look at the year of the creation date, remember that's the leading column in the index. Uh, oops, we jumped around a little bit there. We can see that uh, things break down fairly evenly across all of the possible years here. Uh, there's not like any great big gaps. We have one in just about every year in the index. So everything's pretty even there. <clears throat> now, uh, when we run the plan, I'm just going to recompile this thing real quick to make sure I'm getting something fresh out the bag. And I look for the top 5,000 rows for vote type ID 1, this runs fairly quickly. Uh, this runs in around about 23 milliseconds total, and it does about 15,000 logical reads. So that's good. And when we look at the execution plan, uh, what I want to show you first is that when we look at the uh, parameters that got passed in, uh, top, just like any other parameter, was uh, cached. We, so we have a parameter compile value of 5,000. And we also have a, a parameter runtime value of 1,000. No, 5,000 rather. Now, if I get rid of this and we go look at uh, an execution where we have uh, where we pass a 1 in as top, exactly what you think is going to happen happens. We hit F4, we go look at the plan properties. Got to jump around a little bit to get to the right one. And when I look at the parameter list, uh, now I have a compile time value of 5,000 and a runtime value of 1. So just like any other parameter in a store procedure in SQL Server, it gets cached when we uh, run the run the run the run the query the first time, and then it gets reused when we run the query subsequent times. Now, obviously, this could backfire if you know we recompile here and we run the plan looking for a top one first, and then the next execution, some ding dong comes along and looks for a million rows. This is the obvious one. We're going, to get, we're going to reuse that tiny little plan that uh, SQL Server came up with to find one row, and we're going to use it to find a million rows. That's the obvious bad part of parameter sniffing. The kind of less bad part, or the kind of <laughs> more interesting bad part, is uh, what happens when we look for data that uh, is a little bit harder to find, that rare data. So now I'm going to look for a top one for the vote type ID of four. Remember, this is the one that only has about 773 rows in the, in, the, uh, in the table. But when I look for top one, it's fast because it finds a row really early in the index that it can give back. Again, this is going to be uh, early in the index. It's, it's order descending. So it finds this row from 2013 and says, good, we're done. If I say I want the top 5,000 where vote type ID equals 4, this is going to be a little bit less snappy. Now we're going to spend about 2 seconds, or actually close to 3 seconds, scanning uh, the entire index and looking for data. We can see that we spent an elapsed 20, uh, 2,700 milliseconds, close enough to 3 seconds for me. And we did, uh, let's see, that's 146, about 146,534 
read. So we had to scan that entire index looking for that kind of spread out, kind of rare vote type ID4. We had to start at the beginning, which is going to be the year 2013, and we had to go all the way to the end, which is uh, 2008. <clears throat> so that's one example. Now, what's kind of interesting that I found is if uh, I recompile things, if I clear out the plan for that store procedure, and I look for the top 5,000 first. Now, even though I know that 5,000 rows don't exist, that's not really an issue here because the uh, the top will exit when the nested loops join says, I don't have any more rows to give you. The top says, okay, well, I wanted 5,000. Thanks a lot. So if we run this first, the plan changes a little. And it changes in that it goes parallel now. SQL Server says, I, I think I might have to spend a little bit more time reading this data. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to go parallel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use multiple threads to find these rows because they're spread out everywhere. So that's kind of a cool thing that SQL Server knew to do. And then when I rerun, of course, looking for a top one, it's going to reuse that parallel plan. And things are going to be fairly snappy still, right? That's still okay. We're still running in under a second. So pretty well under a second there. Now, Something else interesting that I came across when I was messing with stuff is that if you use optimize for unknown and you use a variable for top, you get kind of a funky guess, just like you do with most other unknown guesses. Now, what I've done for this uh, run of the store procedure is I've quoted out the vote type ID part of the where clause because I don't want you thinking that uh, the the, the, the row estimate is coming from the vote type ID that I've chosen to pass in. That's, that's not where it's coming from. If I, re, if I uh, recompile the query without that where clause in it, and uh, just, for, just for good luck, I'm going to make sure it's extra double recompiled. Uh, I'm going to run this now, looking for the top 5,000 uh, uh, rows. And when I go look at the execution plan, rather than guessing 5,000, my top has a guess of 100. So when you use optimize for unknown with a parameterized top, uh, there, you always get this uh, guess of 100. I tried lots of different numbers, and the only time that it was never not 100 is if I recompile, <laughs> threw a recompile hint on there. So um, that, was, that was a little funny. Uh, anyway, if you use top in a parameterized sort of way, there are some things you might want to explore if you're running into problems, uh, if you're recompiling the plan, if unparameterized or even non-parameterized dynamic SQL might help. Now, I, I say that, and in, in I know people are going to crawl out of their skin because unparameterized dynamic SQL can lead to SQL injection attacks. I know that the it, it's lessened to a degree because you would be using an integer with top and likely just using a function like rtrim or something to produce a, a, a stringified version of the number to uh, concatenate into the query. But the risk is still there. So be careful. You might want to say, okay, if, if, I have, if I know that under certain conditions I want a different plan for things, do I need to separate code into different store procedures? Or do I have an optimize for a value? Like if I, rather than doing optimize for unknown, can I optimize for a value like 5,000, 10, 5, 10,000, 2.1 billion, whatever that, whatever Adam Mechanic's phone number is, uh, and get a better plan that way? Uh, do I need to change indexes? Like maybe like the order of the key, like the order of the key of the index has been appropriate for the query. Do I need to have some included columns to get rid of that key lookup? Do I need to make an adjustment there? So there's a lot of stuff that you could look at as ways to solve it. But this is just to let you know that that issue exists. And you know maybe if if you keep reading reading my blog posts and and, and stuff like that, may, maybe we'll talk about all the ways that you can fix it coming up. Anyway. Uh, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned some stuff. Uh, I mean, who knows? Maybe you didn't. If you're if you're if you're smart, you didn't learn anything. And I hope you were at least entertained if you didn't learn anything. Uh, anyway, I am Eric Darling with uh, Eric Darling Data, and uh, thanks for watching.